Welcome. In this video, I have the privilege of interviewing an old friend and fellow Marine, Alex Pladars. Alex and I go way back. We were in the same battalion together during uh, our time at 2nd Battalion, 9th Marines. And uh, we deployed together to Afghanistan and uh, have uh, a number of uh, positive memories. In fact, uh, I would consider him one of my best friends. He is a good man, strong character, integrity, has accumulated a significant amount of wisdom over the years, has a legendary career. In my view, he is a legend. Uh, currently, as a staff sergeant in the United States Marine Corps uh, Special Operations uh, Group, as a critical skills operator, uh, you don't want to miss this one. That's the bottom line. Alex goes by Dars. He is the uh, the highest level of legitimacy. So, without further ado, I give you Alex Pladars. You know, it's it, it's it certainly adds another layer when you have a kid, man. You, you you know how it feels when you're away from your significant other. She's an adult. She's got it. She's doing her thing. She's taking care of business. You're taking you're doing your thing. You're taking care of business. You add a child into that mix, man it becomes so much more um, mentally and emotionally like arduous process, you know? Well said, Dose. I appreciate that. Well, I just, I sympathize with the situation. I know how you feel. <laughs> I appreciate you coming on to the call today. The uh, background discussion uh, and this so far just flowed so perfectly into a place of uh, wisdom and presence and respectable perspective that I just had to hit record uh, and begin this cap because uh, you're a an accomplished man with great wisdom and experience that deserves respect. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. One hundred percent. Staff Sergeant of Marines. Not for long. Not for long. If I can help it, I'm I'm on the board right now, man. I should be picking up. So, what does that mean? Gunny Dars. Who'd ever thought? Congratulations. You know, thank. Well, we'll see. We'll see. You know, I like to uh, go against the grain a little bit. So, um, you know, someone's got to fight those battles, man. And it might be at the cost of getting promoted later, but that's okay because people need – the core and the world need people like that. We, we talked about that a little bit before. Uh, what kind of people? No, we'll see. We'll see. What kind of people does the core need? Does the world need? Ah, okay. You want to test me? Well, no, no we talked about it, man. We talked about it. We uh, – you know, the, the – you know, as well as I do, you know, in the military, it's a little bit different of a, of a, of an environment, um, in a lot of ways. Um, but in some, not necessarily, man, you know, you know, you know, the vast majority of people, um, they're in it for their self endeavor. You know what I mean? And there are so many people out there and you saw them as well as I did and still do that are willing to go against their own personal moralities, ethics, beliefs, whatever ideals, um, in order to get a step ahead, you know, than the rest. And, and although that may be viewed in two ways, right. It could, could be viewed as a good thing and necessary thing at times. Um, you know, contrarily, you need people that are going to stand up for not the just individual beliefs, but collective beliefs. Right. Um, I think, you know, I have talked, talked about in the past, uh, you know, I've told you, you know, I'm a people person, you're a people person. We always kind of have been, we've always been the guy to kind of walk into a room kind of just demanded respect by your presence and, 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 and not through a, not through dictation, but inspiration, right? Like just, just being personable, um, and being genuine, you know what I mean? Which pays yeah. huge, huge dividends. Um, you know, one of the Marsoc attributes is interpersonal skills. There's 10 attributes that we look for when, when we want to bring guys into the community. One of those being interpersonal skills. It's of vast importance. Um, some of the conversations that you and I have had 
about my work experience, you know, more recently, um, you know, in the joint and interagency environments, man, if you, if you don't have interpersonal skills, um, and they're not genuine, it's like a beaming light of false personality. You know, it's it, it, anybody, any human being picks that up, you know, instantly. And, you know, you, 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 you tarnish your credibility in a matter of moments. You know what I mean? When you're not a genuine person with, you know, robust interpersonal skills. Um, I digress. I think what, you know, originally I was trying to say is that, you know, people have, you know, specifically in my line of work, in our line of work, um, you have people that have, you know, one agenda at the end of the day, and that's themselves. But when you work in a group, uh, group environment, when you work in, in an environment that requires co cooperation, um, you know, leadership, fellowship, um, you, you, you have to pick and choose those battles. And, and a lot of people, I believe as they get, you know, as they progress later in life and in their careers, I think they, they, it's kind of like, uh, it's, it, it's like investments to me, right? As you get older, your investments become more conservative. Same thing in the workforce and military in a career. As you get older, you care less about, you know, the greater good and more about yourself and your own endeavors. And, and, and that's, that's okay. Right. But there are certain times, certain moments, certain situations, discussions where people have to stand up and say, Hey, no, you know, th this is wrong or, um, there's a better way. And if all for not, at least needs to be discussed, right? Like maybe my way is not the way, but it deserves acknowledgement, right? Like the, the against the grain, you know, type of mentality isn't just to, to cause waves, um, you know, you, uh, case in point prior to this, and this is a little bit why I'm a little kind of, uh, you know, I mentioned to you starting school today. Uh, I just got out of a, an OPT, uh, meeting. It's an operational planning team. Um, it was with a couple majors, a couple master guns, a couple staff sergeant ground guys like me, a couple gunnies, um, discussing, discussing some changes to STC, which is the training course for the enablers that joined MARSOC. And as I'm looking around the room, you know, guys are, guys are throwing out ideas and, and, and really this is just a, a problem framing meeting. Um, and then in, you know, in, in some lines of effort, maybe offering some solutions or, or things to further discuss, uh, you know, I look around the room, certain things. And one guy says something and a lot of guys are, you know, one guy shakes his head, yeah, yeah. Another guy shakes his head, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And you get this this environment of a guy's just shaking their heads north and south, like, yeah, you know, that works. But there's no real, um, there's no real like, I don't know the word I'm looking for, root cause, you know, root cause and out, root analysis, root cause analysis. There's no real like discussion, um, you know, about the problem at hand. You just get an idea, and a lot of guys are like, oh yeah, you know. I either want to get this this meeting done or I'm thinking about, you know, what I'm doing this afternoon when I get home or or whatever. And so I started to be a guy that I'm, you know, I'm, I'm sitting there taking notes and, and you know, I'm listening to what people say and I'm writing them down, you know, one by one. Like He said this. I have a question about that. He said this. I have a question about that. Or maybe I want to propose this. And I'm writing those down. And so get a room. I looked around at one point, got a room full of shaking heads north and south. And I, I started to pipe up and just, hey, you know. So and so, you mentioned, you know, yada yada yada. Um, you know, how would that affect this? You know, and, and I started to kind of get those looks. You know what I mean? And I'm like, it doesn't matter. This is an OPT. My rank doesn't matter. Who I am doesn't matter. These discussions need to be had. This is what this meeting is for, right? So, um, I, I I don't know, man. It, it, it's interesting to me. Um, so so the course certainly needs more people that were that will do that. You know, as I've you know, when you and I parted ways, um, you know, I continued on the same path or a similar path. And, uh, you know, being the young guys that we were, were, that we were, we always had those conversations and always, always said, oh man, you know, if I was in, if I was, you know, king for a day, you know, X, Y, Z, right. Well, now I'm starting to see and starting to become a part of that demographic. And I'm starting to see more of that conservative, you know, 
more of that conservative behavior as they as they get older, further into their career, not wanting to cause waves, not wanting to cause a ruckus, and just kind of shake north and south. And that's that's not what we need, right? That's not how we progress, right? That's not, you know, uh, the yes man, you know, doesn't doesn't uh, you know doesn't innovate, doesn't doesn't produce progress, right? Like adversity does, right? having tough discussions, asking tough questions, asking why. And so when I say, you know, the world and the military and our nation need more people like that, I genuinely mean it, you know, regardless of the cost, right? So for me, you know, jokingly saying, hopefully I'm gonna get promoted, but you know, you never know, man, <laughs> your fit reps will reflect, right? Like I cause waves, man, I ask hard questions and guys don't always like that. And that's okay with me because I'm fulfilled in those endeavors. You know what I mean? As a, as a human being, I can look back on the day, the month, the year and say, okay, I didn't, I didn't make that conservative milestone goal. Why? What did it cost me? Well, it didn't really cost me anything, right? It, it if anything, you know, in terms of what you value in, in, in life, you know what I mean? What do you value? What, what does promotion mean? More, more money? Or what? More responsibility, maybe. In, in, I would argue in in soft, not necessarily, right? Billet, uh, you know, outplays rank. Um, so what what am I gaining through those personal endeavors? Not much, in my opinion, right? To me, for me, who who lives a comfortable life, and don't I don't live outside my means. You know, my my kids and wife and dogs and cats and this whole circus is provided for. I'm happy. So is it worth sacrificing those battles at the cost of just getting a little bit more money or getting another rank or, or, you know, adding a rocker to my collar, I could give a shit less. What's important to me is that I had an, uh, uh, some sort of impact on a conversation, on a process, on a, you know, name, name, name your, name your lane. Um, that's what matters to me when I can look back and say, yeah, I had an effect. It cost me a promotion. I'll get promoted next year. It's the fucking military. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't matter. So for me personally, um, I think it's important. Not everyone needs to be like that, but you do have to have some people like that. And you, you, you know as well as I do, that's how we elicit change, right? Like, especially something like the military, especially something like special operations forces, right? Nobody wants to change. We're American, right? Like, we don't, we're good. We don't need to change, right? If, don't, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Well, there are some things that break and we got to address them. We can't just shake our heads north and south and say, yes, sir, everything's okay, way okay when it's not. And so many people are willing to do that. Long-winded answer, but yeah. I wouldn't say long-winded. I would say well-articulated and comprehensive answer. No, absolutely. Thank you for sharing. Robust interpersonal skills being a key attribute for someone in the community. Can those things be developed? Mm. Attributes? It's a good question. Or they it's a good question. I think it's a good mix of both. Um, in my line of work, we certainly do have, uh, you know, and, and I'll keep it. I'll keep some of it vague uh, just for the recording. Um, if you and I can talk about some things on the side, but they're, 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 they can be learned to an extent, right? There's a ceiling to the level at which those attributes can be honed. The other, in order to break through that ceiling, it has to be innate. And, you know, it, it, it comes from, a myriad of different places, right? I would argue mine comes a lot from experience, life exp life and work experience. We've known each other for over a decade. You know a lot about about uh, you know a lot about my history. You know prior to the core, a lot of the adversity I faced as a you know as a young teen, as a young man, shared adversity between the two of us and others. You know in our in our younger days of of this line of work. Um, 
and I'll tell you, and you know this, people with those experiences are becoming more and more seldom, right? So, you know, for instance, the, 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 the 21, 22 year old guys I'm seeing now, um, try and go through the process. They're struggling in some of those areas, right? They're, they're fairly deficient. Now, myself, the other cadre, you know, people within the community can bring them and hone those attributes, hone those skills to a certain level of adequacy. But I truly don't believe that you can be a master of any one of those, you know, any one of those attributes through just learning. Um, now we have things that we that we go through. Uh, you know, we have various courses. We have, you know, communications seminars, courses, uh, and and they're fantastic. Don't get don't get me wrong. They are absolutely fantastic. I've been to quite a few of those um, briefing labs, you know, teaching, you know, similar to what you would see, I assume, in the collegiate level, um, you know, public speak, speaking, public briefing, um, you know, adult learning, uh, communication um, with interagency personnel, NGOs, OGOs. Uh, we do a lot of those things and we have those available to this and, and, and we put a lot of our, our personnel through that. Uh, but again, I feel like that can only be trained to a certain level. The rest is in an, is innate and organic to the individual. And however that was developed prior to, um, you know, is what it is. You either, you know, I can't say anyone's born with it, right? Because you, you don't develop those skills. You know, if, if, if you were born in a box and you never talked to a human being um, and, you, and you, you, you didn't experience culture and you didn't experience, you know, uh, the social aspects of life, you know, how would you grow up to be as a, as a person? Probably something along the lines of a Jeffrey Dahmer. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe not. But um, I will say, you know, again, Trained to a certain level, yes, of adequacy. If you want to be great in that realm, it, it has to be organic to the individual, I think. And ha however that came to be, for me, I think it's experience, life and work experience. And developing relationships, right? So, you know, you know, talk about introvert, extrovert, you know, in, you know, personable people. You and I are personable people. I mentioned earlier, you know, we, we find it easy to go into to, to a room or a conversation or a meeting. Name your situation and be genuinely comfortable, right? There can be varying levels of intellect. There can be varying levels of, uh, uh, you know, social status, and it doesn't matter, right? Um, that's organic. That's, you, 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 you can't teach that comfortability. You know, we, we say something, I say something to my students all the time, um, you know, and you've heard this, you have to become, you know, we're, we're teaching you guys to become comfortable in uncomfortable situations, right? Well, how do I do that? Well, I just exposure, right? Exposure. Exposure over and over and over and over and over again will elicit some form of natural response to a given situation, no matter how uncomfortable. If I give you nothing but uncomfortable situations, whether that's, you know, seer training, you know, survival, evading, resisting, and escaping, or you know, talking to somebody or a group of people that you might consider outside of your league, um, something as simple as that. Regardless, if I, if I expose you to that over and over and over again, eventually you'll at least be comfortable. You may not be great at navigating the, the situation, but you'll be comfortable in the situation. And as I mentioned earlier, that's huge because the genuine presence, the genuine care, the genuine personal skills, um, no matter how no matter how juvenile matter, you know, and, and when you get uh, in, in front of a group of people or, or, or what have you, um, you know, you might not be the smartest guy in the room, but if people see that you're genuine and you can talk and, and, and really ultimately they see that you're comfortable, I would argue that, you, that you're probably good. You know, they're, they're going to look past that you're deficient in your level of intellect.
Give me a sec. Shush. Come here. Come here. Come say hi. I got two cold-blooded killers, dude, just ready to... <laughs> no, they're not. They're, they're babies. Guard dogs. So one is my brother's. He's a golden retriever. I'm watching him because he just moved from... Uh, he was up here, stationed here as a corpsman. He just moved down south to Destin, Florida. And uh, the other one is a dog I picked up about two years ago. Got a big boy for a big boy. He's an English Mastiff. I wanted a big dog. And so I got a big dog. Come here. Raiden. Come here, boys. They're gone. So somebody's dropping off a package. So, you know, they had to let them know. Don't come over here, man. Don't come over here. Raider, come here, come here. Thanks again for sharing, man. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. The persona isn't the best word but it's the one I've got. Persona denotes a, an aspect of like detachment from something authentic about yourself, yes. but, or, or a fabricated yes. personality. So that's, I'm not intending that aspect of the word. So I'm looking for something different than it, but the persona that you display, Dars, is iconic in the absolute best sense of the word. To put it under a pop culture reference, I'd propose for your consideration an actually badass version of Captain America. <laughs> But not just badass as in John Wick or um, but badass in a refined way as well, a gentlemanly way, which is you know, the, the, you know a good character reference for this would be Matthew McConaughey and the mm. gentleman. But also with top tier tactical. <laughs> Proficiency and strategic Take this bond. mindset. Bond. So all of the. Tell me it's bond, man. That's a good point. Bond. That, I, that's that's exactly what that line of thinking was leading towards. Bond for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thanks, man. I. Uh, I wish I felt the same. Uh, I think there's always room for improvement, man. Uh, but that's why I have. People like yourself close to me, man, because, you know, you, you, <laughs> it's all here, man. All my, all my stuff, it's all here. All my, my paddles and my, my flag and my eagle pictures and my, my parachute wings and my raider shit and my rope. That's the rope you get when you're uh, going through ITC. You know, if you want to fail or if you want to quit, you hang your rope. We got it all here. I got a bunch of coins and it's all here, man. Never forget, number one, though. Never forget where you came from, man. Never. It's pretty cool. That is cool. Yeah, I don't, certainly don't forget where I came from. I think a lot of people do. Man, sometimes I wonder what it'd be like, man, if you came over with me and you'd, you'd see a lot of the stuff firsthand that I'm talking about. It's just, there's good guys, man. There's great, 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 great individuals. But man, how less people forget, my friend, you know, this, this persona, this, uh, you know, this, this, this persona you speak of, man, it, it's, it's not it's not born out of, you know, uh, present status, right? It's, it's, it's born out of 
those things that I mentioned that are organic that stem from experience, ideally shared experience, right? Um, you know, it's 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 not it's not born out of you know the current status of what what we're doing and who we are. And I think you see a lot of that, you know, unfortunately. So yeah, I never forget where I come from, man. I owe a lot of my success to where I come from and what I've done and, and who to, who I've, I've I've drawn in close to me and, and continue to stay close with, such as yourself. You know, and I can count those individuals on probably one hand. Um, I couldn't tell you the last person I gave, you know, a dedicated, you know, hour to. I, I try, you know, I, I reach out, you know, I try and talk to guys because um, I, I, I do genuinely care. Uh, but as far as actually dedicated time, I'm much, you know, um, yeah, it's certainly important, man. I'm, I'm, I'm certainly to, uh, eternally grateful, uh, to call you one of my closest friends, you know, no matter, no matter how, uh, separated our paths have been at times, um, you know, we always come right back, uh, right back to uh, where we were before. Like we we're shoot, shooting the shit next to each other in in our bunks, you know, in Afghanistan. What's up, buddy? That's what you gotta look forward to, man. So, Stoked. Yeah. <sighs> I like what you're saying about remembering where you come from. Two nine was uh, filled with character building. No kidding. Let's see. Is this coming through all right for you? Yeah. Remember this guy? Who's that? On the left. Screen share coming through all right for you guys? It is. Maybe I need a full screen because I can't tell with the with the goggles and the or with the sunglasses. Is that you? Me on the left. And the first deployment. Yeah. And Marja. Man, look how thin you were. Lean, lean, mean, kill machine. It's a good picture, this, man. This was baby right out of boot camp. This That's was right. four years after, right before I got out. I got an updated photo. Oh, nice, man. Good. That's good. That was smart. A little sandbox zone. But, yeah. Uh, The character attributes you talked about are something I think people would pay a lot of money to learn. To put it bluntly. Yeah. No, yeah. And, you know, I haven't given that the dedicated thought um, it, it, it deserves. Um, I've had, you know, and... and I'll say, you know, with, with the way life is, and obviously I'm, I'm still working and I'm still active, I still have a lot going on. Um, you know, it is difficult to find the time, you know, also pursuing the, the degree, uh, you know, these, I've got these little terrorists running around, uh, you know, it's a lot. However, um, I do feel like at some point in time here soon, I want to identify 10 years from now, what that potentially looks like. Um, there's a lot of different, you start to get into that. Um, and there's a lot of different, uh, entities within the community and an external to the community involved in that kind of line of work in, in varying capacities, right? And whether it's, whether it's, you know, work involved, you know, with tactics and, or, uh, just overall character building. Uh, you know, obviously most of, of what I'm, what I'm uh, exposed to is, you know, community driven and soft driven. 
that's not to say that 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 character building doesn't uh, venture out into every aspect of the workforce, you know, in a, in a, in a broad variety of ways. And, and I've, I've thought a couple of times, like, and, you know, as I said, I haven't given a lot of uh, dedicated uh, time, but, I, but I kind of want to, because I do feel that if I could focus on that and give it the time it deserved, um, you know, and maybe accompanied with, you know, an, another individual or a couple of individuals, I think there is some money to be made there. I think, and, and meaningful money, right? Like not like doing something you enjoy, doing something that's productive, doing something that helps people. You know, we talked about personality skills and, um, you know, kind of like workforce uh, uh, classification. Um, I, sc- I always score the strongest in like social skills, right? And, and what matters to me. Um, what matters to me and what I'm good at, and they're kind of parallel. And so, you know, it, it's interesting you mentioned that. And, you know, we've, we've touched on it before. And I've told you that I've, I've had, you know, uh, interest in, you know, getting those messages out there in some form or fashion, right? Whatever that ends up being. I hope here soon in the next year or two, you know, to kind of identify that, you know, 10 years, I'll be 44. Uh, the Marine Corps will be behind me at that time. Uh, I'll be on to something else. What that something else is, um, as far as what's available and what makes sense, um, you know, financially, you know, self fulfillment, um, all of those things, it's 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 vast, right? You know, this right here buys you, it buys you, it, it buys you doors, it buys you a lot of doors, um, and I think that's wonderful, right? But I think there are a lot of other doors that not necessarily that buys you, but what's learned, you know, accompanied with, you know, uh, that persona you spoke of, um, a lot of hidden doors that, that aren't so, you know, uh, oversaturated, you know, with, with, with these types of guys. So, or I'll say our type of guys. So I don't know. Um, definitely, definitely a, you know, we talked about this, you know, capturing that, and what that looks like. Um, and in spare time and in due time, I, I think, you know, whether whether it's, you know, on my own, you know, whatever venue, whether it's with you when you have time, because um, I respect your opinions. I, I greatly respect your opinions and you as an individual. Um, I think that you make me better you know, when we talk and then, you know, that's, that's friendship aside, right? Like first, first and foremost, we're, we're, we're friends. And that, that's to me at the end of the day, that's the only thing that matters. You know, I told you uh, when you mentioned the move that I was here, I'm close to anything you need. And, 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 you know, I mean that wholeheartedly. Um, and that's the first thing. If there are other, you know, branches that stem off of that, that trunk. Cool. If not, that's fine too. But um, it's definitely a good way to, to capture and talk about those things because I do feel like um, there is, uh, you know, financial openings um, for that type of skill set. That's what you want to call it. Um, and I do think if I were to, you know, dedicate some time and hone those skills, that, you know, I, myself accompanied with individuals like yourself, um, kind of in that caliber. Uh, would 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 su- would succeed, I think, in in that realm. Um, it's to be seen, but no, it's, it's definitely worth. I appreciate you bringing that up. So I think you're right. I think you're right. And you look at businesses, and, and you're a lot more. I mean, you've spent, you know, you got out after what four, and I'm almost at fourteen. So we're looking at a decade. You know, you've had a decade of um, trial and error and and experience you know, in a bunch of realms that I haven't ever touched, you know what I mean? Not, not in the, the civilian workplace. Right. So, um, I, I greatly appreciate uh, the things you share with me because it's, it's a, lear- it's, it's a learning experience for me. Right. And even if it's just a discussion, it's little things that I've taken out here and there. 
you know, that maybe, maybe I'm applying to the job that I'm working now, or maybe I'm applying it to a, you know, some of that dedicated thought, you know, writing it down, capturing it, you know, recording it, whatever it is. Um, but I, I, I think there's something there, man. I don't know what that is yet. I don't have, I don't believe that I have the time now to dedicate the time it deserves, uh, but I will. And it's definitely something to keep um, discussing about no matter how seldom. Agreed. Agreed. Well said. Well said. I don't know what that looks like, though. We'll have to see. Crawl, walk, run. Figure it out as we go. Absolutely. What questions do you have for me, Dars? Huh. I don't know, man. I, I don't really have any specific questions. I, uh, I wanted to, I wanted to bring up, I just wanted to see if you had some, if you remember some of these things. So you, you mentioned eating, uh, Sour Patch Kids on the mine roller over there in the, in the, in the motor pool lot. And, uh, that was a memory that had escaped me for a while. When you brought it up, I instantly I was instantly able to reach down in the depths of my brain and pull it out. Uh, and I remember it like yesterday, I thought that was cool. There's a couple other things that I thought was funny in and around the same time. Um, I think we had gone out a couple times already. And we were, we had like bounced into some guys that worked on the base. And, uh, you know, we were the only guys on, on that entire camp wearing greens, green frocks. And so anytime we went anywhere, everyone was like, well, who are those guys, you know? Sure. And little did they know, we were, sure. just, we were just some grunts, you know what I mean? Great in our profession and ready to go go do God's work. Um, <laughs> but I think there was a moment that we were at the bus stop and we were talking with a couple of fellows. They might have been Army. They might have been Marines. And they were talking about the high marks. And they were like, yeah, you guys know those like rockets that take off from here? Um, yeah, that's us, you know, like for, you know, multi-million dollar pop box system. Like, yeah, every time. Every time you hear that thing, you know, spin up, that's us, you know, blah, blah, blah. We're like, hell yeah, that's cool, man. That's awesome. And uh, they're really, really talking their things up. And we're like, man, that's great. And then we're like, yeah, we're the ones on the other end calling those in. Like you see, I remember specifically, we pointed out to that big mountain. We're like, see that mountain? We're operating out and behind that mountain. And we're the ones calling those high marks. And they were just like, blah, 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 blah. they were like, what? <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. I just thought that was great. And, you know, not, not a, not a, you know, measuring contest by, you know, maybe a little bit because we're grunts. But, of course. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> no, man, it was, it was hilarious. There was that. Um, there was the commandeering of the barber chair. The commandeering <laughs> of some, some new, uh, some new army personnel that had showed up and showed up and they were staying temporarily in some, uh, you know, billeting right next to us. Well, they just shot, showed up and thought it was fine that they leave their all of their gear out in the middle of the open while they go and do whatever on the base. That's right. I remember some of our fellows commandeering some of that stuff as well, um, commandeering some bikes. I remember one evening walking to the gym and being stopped by two fully armed, fully kitted out army bubbas who told us, hey, guys, fellas, uh, are you guys Marines? And we're like, we're like well, who's asking? Maybe, you know? And they're like, well, our first aren't said we can't have any Marines walk through here because this is the army building area and you guys keep stealing all of our stuff. <laughs> and I don't know if you remember some of those instances. Those are some of the ones that stick out to me, man. And I just, you know, there was, there was a bus incident where we got a, you know, we stood up to that one army lady who was much higher ranked than us. And we basically told her off collectively. She steps off the bus and we got a rounding applause uh, uh, by the rest of the army bubbas on there. They were like, we hate that woman. Blah, blah, blah. And we're all like, you know, we were just going around just in our green frogs, man, just bad as could be just like, what? Say something, do something. And we were handling it, man. We were handling business every every possible way we were handling business operationally we we're handling business in the rear we were handling business through our interpersonal skills no matter how rough they were at the time um 
you know, uh, maybe a little sharp, uh, but we were handling business as a bunch of, you know, 21, 22, 23 year old kids. And I think it's, it's funny, man. I, you know, when I, when I talk about those experience, you know, those are included in that. You know what I mean? Th- no, no matter how vanilla they seemed or benign they seemed at the time, they've helped mold me and you who we are today. You know what I mean? No matter how minute, you know, and a vast collection of experiences like that, you know, over time, those little, those little tiny carvings, those little minute, um, you know, ever so carefully crafted carvings. You know what I mean? Each and every little nook of that tool, you know, are those little experiences. And so when you mentioned that the other day, man, I was like, wow. And it started to just bring up a lot of, a lot of little, uh, little, little tidbit memories that I was like, wow, man, we had that one kid who lived in his little cave. You know, we had the stomping of, uh, or doing his clothes, uh, you know, clothes bin or whatever. <laughs> We had I remember Ash Orduna. Ketchum. I remember how Orduna was all about Reddit during those days. I remember him scrubbing through Reddit and uh, coming back with ridiculous stories. Dune was one of the funniest dudes I think I've ever met. Dune is hilarious. Ever. We laughed on, like half the day just because of Dune. It, There's always I, something. I remember wrong. almost almost getting sick at times laughing so hard. I still tell stories, man. Like stomping, like him coming home, being so incredibly proud of his little clothes box that he bought. And I remember coming in, it was a long, hot day. And I walked in and I'm like, what's that? And you guys were like, oh, that's Dune's new clothes thing. And I took my size 13 boot and just drove straight down the middle of it (laughs) for no reason at all. He's a great guy. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh man why, why why would why what a bully i was you know and oh, <laughs> I, I can't even identify why but he was so and i wouldn't do that to anybody else right i would just do it to dune who's my friend <laughs> i guess knowing because he's so genuinely uh, what's up, buddy? Yeah. yeah, go for it. He's so genuinely like uh, of a, a genuine humble person that like you could get away with it and then be like, oh, dude, it's okay. I mean, he was really, really mad. He didn't talk to us for like two days. <laughs> he didn't say a word, but it was well received. And I think we even like we got him something for it. Like we got him a bike or we st- we did something for him. I or I did right. something for him. I don't remember. <laughs> That's uh, funny. That yeah, the kid who used to the, the creature who lived in the corner. He had his little cave. He'd never come out and see the light of the day. Like, oh, I don't even God, know if he dude. went with us on the yeah. on the uh, yeah. pops, man. I don't I don't think he did. I don't think he did. Uh man, what a good time. Great time. AC, Wi Fi, workouts, every day. Good food. Oh, incredible. And then village raids. And then village raids. Kilo assaults. That's right. There's a very unique feeling of running off the back ramp of a Hilo in an Afghan village in the middle of nowhere with dozens and dozens of dudes that have been waiting for this moment for potentially days or weeks have rehearsed it a number of times and are pretty uh charged up uh sprinting off and that feeling is unique oh incredibly unique i'll never forget the time this i believe was on that deployment because I think we did one or two Hilo assaults on the first deployment in Marja. But I think this was on the second one, which means we were together most. Yeah, I think we were. Where at the end of the day, we had worked our way through this whole village and we were all 
on a canal line, basically outside of the village, and one giant line with behind us was poppy fields, and the poppies were like flowering at that time. And the helos came around to land, but somebody apparently, there were some pop shots towards the helicopters on their first pass, so they flew away. Then anyways, they came back for a second pass. I think there was either, was it another helicopter that went in and fired back or some of the gunners in the far side fired? I don't remember. But what I do remember is there being this issue with the first time, they're coming back the second time. And they basically end up flying over our heads from where the village is and where we're all mm-hmm. facing and landing behind us. And then the machine gunners had to stay on the edges. And it was for a moment, it felt completely chaotic because all of the flowers, it was surreal. The flowers were all blasting off of the poppies and was in was in this like cyclone of flower petals and dudes just turning their back to the village and running as fast as they can, hoping it's like the right, you know, they're going to the right one. And then like, <laughs> boom, in this like split second, boom, we were just off the ground. And I, I'll never forget how quick it just goes. <sighs> and I, you know that better than anybody now, oh. but it's like the, the, the opposite microscope, you know, just it turns into a pinhead real quick. And you're like, man, we just spent all day in that village. And, and that were they shooting at the helicopters? Did that just happen? What, why was there, there was like a cyclone of flowers. It was intense. I've never forgotten that. Um, never forgotten that. Anyways, it's a unique feeling getting on and off those, those, uh, helos. No, absolutely. I, I, I remember that exact same moment dude. I really do we almost because it on that second one it almost dropped right on top of us I want to say like they couldn't see they got washed out or something so they came or maybe it was the first one they came they went to land it was like almost on top of us and we're like do they see us <laughs> they were like real quick like I was like dude I'm about to get squished and they're like you know you know what felt like two feet was probably 20 but you know, nonetheless, I'm like, oh gosh, I'm like, I was just told to stay here. Screw it. <laughs> we, and then, uh, yeah, right at the last second, it's like, zoom, 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 and it's gone. And we're just like, oh, I guess we're not getting picked up. Yeah. And then dash two or whoever it was came in. And I don't remember, I don't think this was the same one. We had that young Lieutenant we referred to as LTP and he I remember watching him. Well, this was getting, we were getting picked up at night or low light. So maybe it was morning. I'm not sure. And the bird lands offset. So, you know, you set a cigar shape and they're supposed to land at, you know, the the terminating end of of the cigar. Well, they landed completely, you know, if, if it's an aerial view and this is the cigar of the personnel, you know, he landed over here, which is wrong. Um, for whatever reason, couldn't see, it doesn't matter. Landed over here, everyone's kind of looking around like, what the heck? If I remember correctly, it was a 53, which the tail prop is on the left side of the 53. And that's why you always load, you know, if this is a 53, this is the nose, this is the, the ramp, and the tail prop, you know, is on one side. You always come at, you know, uh, caddy corner to that, to load. Well, the tail prop being here and us being over here, LTP gets up and just starts diddy bopping his way right into the gap between if I'm looking straight at it from the side where the uh, the main rotor is and the tail prop, that little gap right there is what he was walking towards. And I just remember looking, didn't wasn't going to say shit. I just remember looking through nods being like, that dude's head's going to get fucking painted all over the side of that, that bird. Diddy bops over there, never happened. Talks to the crew chief, comes back, he's like, come on. And we're like, wow, dude, like good for him. I also remember uh, same, same individual. We were doing hot and cold LZ offloading procedures. And he was, like, he came to us one morning. He's like, all right, guys, stayed up all night thinking about this. So I'm thinking, got our hand and arm signals, you know, two minutes, 30 seconds. It's like, if it's a hot LZ, <laughs> I hope you remember this. 
we're going to do devil dorm, devil horns for hot. And we're like, we're all like, <laughs> what? We were like, and then we just started joking him. The whole platoon in front of his face, just like, <laughs> all right, boys, 30 seconds. This is a hot LZ. I repeat, this is a hot LZ. And we're all like, <laughs> just going on and on and berating this guy. Poor little soul. And then he also called the Australian eel uh, ground maneuver, uh, you know, for echelon, echelon <laughs> movement and fires. He called it like a Swedish peel or something. And we were all like, do you mean an Australian peel? So as we started to rehearse the Australian peel off the, off the bird, we all just started yelling like, <laughs> all right, gentlemen, this is a hot LZ. And then someone would be like, hey, guys, Norwegian peel. Someone else would be like, someone else would be like, hey, Mediterranean peel. Someone would be like, Belgian peel. And we just kept going on and on and on. And he just, you know, up there kind of kicking rocks like, I don't, I don't, I don't get any respect from the guys. I love, I don't know if you remember any of that, but I loved every second of it. I think about it, man. That was I, hilarious. I, I think about how serious he was. How, how disconnected he was from his guys to be like, this is what we're doing for Hot LZ. Or we're going to do a, you know, pull it, you know, a, a Norwegian peel, like Argentinian peel. Like, what? What a wild man. I'm so LZ glad that you brought that up. The whole realm of, of deep gut busting humor was just Ugh. sodden with ash in my mind after the years of crushing defeat and even despair <laughs> at times facing the unknown unforgiving wilderness that is the entrepreneurial domain for the vast majority of aspirants i will say i'm glad you brought that up it's genuinely hilarious and i think i can only compliment your tale with one remark that you'll find humorous and that's although i do not uh, I haven't forgotten the those moments. I had completely forgotten about his existence. He, ah, yes. the, the insignificance of his contribution and stature within the unit, he might as well possess three to four pixels on a screen in my mind. Very abstract. <laughs> he was the, the, you know, the embers to our joke, but... I can barely recall oh, God. even his name or what he looked like. Yeah. And for good reason. Uh, right. I mean, it's just like you mentioned, but yeah, being the fuel for the vast majority of our humor. My God, I loved it. I loved it so much. And it, I'll tell you, man, I sympathize with your position, man. And I, you know, I also respect it because you have gone through and, you know, this might be, a conversation for next time because I am curious um, about some of the nuanced aspects of your uh, of your path over the past decade. And I know we've talked, you know, here and there, but but really holistically, not not so much diving into each entrepreneurial endeavor, but but kind of just you know some of the things that we've we've you know haven't really reconnected on. Um, you know, relationship, you know, you know, you know, having, having a child, you know, just your life, your well being, how you've been. Cause when I say I sympathize, that is the, you know, the, the key thing that, you know, guys in your position that, that, that got out and moved on to something, you know, uh, something different. Everybody says the same thing, right. That you, the, 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 you are alone, right. In, in, Compared to what we were used to, right? That camaraderie, that brotherhood. I mean, it just doesn't exist anywhere else. Um, and, you know, it's, it's fantastic to talk about. And it's fantastic to, to, to bring, uh, you know, shed some light on again. Um, but, man, I, I cannot imagine how tough um, it's been over the past decade for you to not only, not only like the career path, um, that you've kind of, that you've kind of, uh, engaged with, um, that's tough alone, right? That's tough for somebody who's never experienced the brotherhood. 
So on its own, that's some, you know, that that's a that's a tall order. Um, Complement that with, you know, leaving this. Um, I can't I can't imagine how tough that's been. And there are so many guys, so many guys, and you know as well as I do, and we know some of them. Um, same exact situation, same scenario, and just could not hack it, man. Um, you know, and it's um, unfortunate, um, you know, and I'm not looking to place blame anywhere. I'll, 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 I'll say that when we talked about persona, personality, character, um, you know, I never doubted and still don't doubt for one second your ability through any given hardship. I never have. Um, I brag about you. I talk to, you know, guys now about you. You know what I mean? Um, you're one of a few because it's such a um, it's an inspiring story, man. It, it really is. You know, and, and you know, staying in, you know, can can arguably be, you know, the easy button. It could be it could be viewed as the easy button. It could be viewed in a lot of different lights, but it does take some true dedication and commitment through hardship to do what you've been able to do over the past decade and continue on. Um, and I know we didn't talk about it and hopefully we'll get to it uh, next time in your video, you know, you, that you sent me, you know, you talked about the wariness um, and that stuck out to me because, you know, going back to the being comfortable and uncomfortable situation again, yeah, we teach it, but I told you, you know, in my opinion, it's, you know, to break through that ceiling of adequacy, it's organic. And you've had, you have it, you've always had it. Um, and so for, for myself, I've never doubted you for, uh, you know, even a millisecond, but it, it is, it is, you know, vastly impressive um, what you've been able to accomplish. And I'm, I'm definitely interested to catch up on a, a little bit more of that. I'm, I'm curious to see where, you know, what types of conversations that would lead us into. Um, impressive, man. Absolutely impressive. I, I, I look at, you know, my own situation and I feel a similar way. You know, but I do ask, I'm like, could, could, could I do that? Could I have done that? Could I do it now? Yeah, 100%. Could I have done that 10 years ago? Hmm, I don't know. Yes, but to what level of success, right? To what level of comfortability, you know, you know, emotional comfortability, mental comfortability, financial comfortability, to what level would I have been able to accomplish what you have? And I don't know. And I'll never know, right? Because... We, we went down different paths and I'm, I think it's easy for us to both talk about um, our experiences together and to talk about the military because it's something similar that we have in common. Um, I think it's a little bit more difficult to maybe discuss some of the nuances of my job for the past seven years and your job for the past 10. I think it would be a lot. Uh, I think it'd be a really interesting conversation. It'd be a, a really good learning opportunity for me um, just by um your your way of communication um, and and the way you articulate your your thought um, is uh, is palatable, um, and I'd be curious to hear more about that. Just because we we've reconnected on quite a few levels, uh, but I think I've missed a lot of kind of your story on uh, the past ten years, and and really conversely a lot a lot of mine as well, right? Like you, I know wave tops of you, you know wave tops of me. But some of the nuance within those stories, man, I don't think we've really discussed. And and I, I would I would argue that, you know, it's probably, you know, depending on what we talk about, maybe not a recordable session. Maybe. But you know what I mean? If we really want to get into some gritty detail with each other, um, I mean if you're gonna record it, keep it for yourself, I, I would do the same thing. But uh yeah, man, I'm, I'm definitely curious about that. And and the weariness, man, that, that, that really sticks out to me because it's a, and, you know, without going into a rap, down a rabbit hole, man, um, you know, it just brings a lot of things to my mind, you know, character, dedication, commitment, a lot of those things that we've discussed, um, thriving in 
uncertainty, right? I think there's a healthy wariness. There's a healthy caution. You, sh- you have to have it. No smart warrior, no smart man would ever live without it, right? It becomes a liability at that time if you don't have a healthy fear of the unknown. Um, but yeah, I, 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 I want to dive into a couple of those things, man, our stories, and then um, talk about some of that wariness and then some of the isolation and then further down the road, uh, diversifying revenue, right? I, I think there are a lot of, cons- like conceptually speaking, I think there's a lot of similarities there that if we brought in our level of thinking, which I think I feel that you and I both do naturally, um, without, you know, peg holing down into certain things. When we start to think more broad and holistic, um, I think there are a lot of parallels with your experience, um, in the business realm in, uh, relation to diversifying revenue, a lot of parallels to diversifying success in my line of what's been my line of work for the past seven, eight years. I, I think that'd be interesting, really interesting to talk about capture. I could not have said it better myself. <laughs> Perhaps next time we sync up the second and a half delay in our connection. We'll, uh, we'll get <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was wondering about that too. I, you know, and and now that you've turned me on to this man, I'll I'll play with it a little bit more. But uh, I think just to to get face to face, I like recording the conversations, capturing it, using it for for future conversations, discussions, endeavors, whatever they may be. I think that's smart. Um, yeah, I'm happy to be a part of that for you know for whatever whatever you know, tool it may be used for. I'm happy to, happy to be a part of it because I think we better ourselves by doing so. Completely agreed. <laughs> Very inspiring, guys. Very, Very inspiring. inspiring. I think uh, inspiring. what what will happen next is something that an author uh, I admire talks about. His name is Joey Coleman. He wrote arguably one of my top three favorite business nonfictions. And it's called um, How to Never Lose a Customer Again. And in the book, he introduces a framework for the customer life cycle that has been very impactful on our work. And he's contributed six out of the 10 like designated standardized customer life cycles that we've been able to discern to date primarily post purchase that's to say the customer experience the brand experience after the point of purchase after the conversion which is meaningful Um, and one of his greatest ideas the idea that he champions in my view is this concept called the affirm phase and the affirm phase begins in the seconds or minutes after that initial purchase and it's intended to overcome any potential buyer's remorse yes a closer yeah you get it you think a lot of the time after, as this thing kind of boots up here, it's a little goofy. Give it a sec. Here we go. And you take someone all the way through. The closer takes them all the way through to point of sale. The sales lane right here. Mm-hmm. As soon as that's done and dusted, invoices paid, agreements are signed, shkadoosh, dropped, implementation. Implementation or client success. Is it consulting? Is it like platform or a course right there's someone kind of guiding along the way trouble being like more of a support capacity or a coaching capacity versus a consultant um otherwise is productized yeah, full product um but i digress the infer the affirm phase is joey coleman's unique contribution 
because he talks about providing a surprise and delight opportunity where your your customer or in the case of the team he just released this book last quarter never lose an employee again conveniently it's intended to overcome any potential buyer's remorse yes and a closer yeah you get it you think a lot of the time after, as this thing kind of boots up here, it's a little goofy, give it a sec, here we go. And you take someone all the way through, the closer takes them all the way through to point of sale, the sales lane right here. Mm-hmm. As soon as that's done and dusted, invoices paid, agreements are signed, skadoosh, dropped, implementation. Implementation or client success. Is it consulting? Is it like, platform or a course right there's someone right. kind of guiding along the way trouble being like more of a support capacity or a coaching capacity versus a consultant um otherwise is productized well, full product um but i digress the infer the affirm phase is joey coleman's unique contribution because he talks about providing a surprise and delight opportunity where you're you're customer or in the case of the team he just released this book last quarter never lose an employee again conveniently it matches the exact same framework so we've just added the red lane uh and we're working to nice. bore out the the red lane because it's the heart and the lifeblood of the company is the team so to have the entire team experience delineated out as the yes. foundational piece for all of our other lines of business a to z snout to tail yes hooves to, to back we can spot the entire beast at every level and the affirm phase was meaningful because of that surprise and delight moment where they they make the commitment they buy something is taken from them and there's a that gap where it's like i wonder if I, if this is going to be as good as I, they promised it would be i wonder if i made the right decision sure. boom dopamine hit whoa way above their expectations, a gift of sorts. And there's different ways, strategies and tactics to crack that code. So I've taken us down a pretty deep rabbit hole filled with details. I suppose what I'm, where I'm pointing us towards here as I wrap up is you'll be surprised and delight with what happens next. There's a few tricks up the sleeve to process this information that I think you'll appreciate. I'm going to run this media only on internal tools. I won't distribute anything externally until we're aligned. So that's never so anything that'll happen automatically. But I'll take this just to be sure that's been said. This file and feed it to Otter and feed it to Descript. And what we're going to do is we're going to summarize this thing and tee it up to be raw material for book development, course development, methodology development, like the bricks that we can use to build and assemble a house. Um, And then you'll get access to those in a very efficient, very clean way. Just be a VR app. You'll just be able to open it. It'll be a two, three, four minute video of like freaking David Attenborough AI. But instead of talking about wildebeests, he's talking about all of the components that we've been discussing key ideas in a very visual cap, you know, aesthetic manner, very pleasing manner to, to be narrated. And our good pals, the uh, GPTs of the world would have greatly assisted in delivering that yes. in record speed and quality. So my hope is to surprise and delight you, my friend. No, that's great, man. I'm, I'm happy to be a part of it, man. A- a- anything that you ever, that we ever discuss, no matter how, uh, you know, personal or, or business realm. Um, just give me a heads up, dude. I'm, I'm pretty open to most things. Um, and if it's helping you at the cost of me just fucking talking to my uh, a friend of mine, I'm, I'm, I'm all aboard. Just give me a heads up. Uh, yeah, whatever, you, whenever you go external with anything, just give me a heads up. But I'm, I'm pretty, I keep my, um, non-disclosable information from conversations like this, right? Like, so, so 
I'm happy to be a part of, of your process, man. Um, if, you know, if it helps you and it helps me in, in some form or fashion, and if it's just a, an opportunity to catch up and, you know, expound upon our ideas, I think that's, that's great because it's healthy. So I don't have any reservations. Um, use what you need, man. I, it's, it, and and I'm, I, I meant that without reservation when I, when I, when I told you, happy to let you record whatever, use it for whatever, man, I, I really don't mind. Um, just let me know. You know, that's all I ask. Uh, but 99.9% of the time, it's going to be a fucking send it. Um, I think it's interesting. You said a couple of words uh, that I, as soon as you talk about post-purchase, um, I wrote down a couple of things and you said all three. Um, I wrote down consultation, close, uh, closers, right? Um, well, you know, what is known as that individual or that that person, that, that character type, and then reassurance. Um, and then you stated all those things. So it's, it's just, again, it's interesting to see how our minds, you know, I, I talked about that parallel. It's interesting to see that y you can, you can discuss some concepts that are otherwise unknown to me, right. In the, in the aspect of detail, but conceptually I can, most of the time I can pick it up and vice versa. Right. So, um, for that reason is why I, I think it's healthy. I wrote down a couple of the exact things that you said, or I wrote them down first, and then you followed up and said them. So that, that, let, let, that let me know conceptually that I'm in the right conversation and that you're not losing me. You might lose me, you know, in, in, into some of the detailed aspects of, you know, a given topic. But when we zoom back out, um, you know, conceptually, it, it, it marries up and then you know, for me, that's kind of my way of contribution, right? Is that you have the details. You talk about uh, a lot of things and, and you're very well versed. Um, and, and I do this, you know, as well. And you, you do for me as well. But you have to have in conversation, you know, you, know, you have somebody, um, you know, who just like today, I mentioned the meeting I was in. You know, guys, they get so... Uh, narrow minded is in the right world. They, they get kind of tunnel vision on a certain topic. Nothing wrong with that. But in a conversation of two, four, however many individuals, if there's varying levels of, um, varying levels of understanding to said topic, then one of those levels is going to eventually try and bring it back out, which is, which is a good thing because this one, like for this situation right now, you can talk about some things. I can I can think about it at a conceptual level and then offer insight. And that's going to pull you and drag you into another area of thinking. Now, that is the definition, really, of critical thinking. Our whole, my whole job is predicated on critical thinkers, right? My, my job title is critical skills operator, right? So um, critical thinking is, and you know this, is having those pathways no matter how far apart they are, how different they are, and then drawing connections from those pathways and seeing where they go and intercept and how they relate to each other. That's how I've always seen it. That's how I kind of explain it to some of my guys when we, when we first start discussing critical thinking and, you know, how that applies to the battlefield and tactics and operation and strategy um, at the operational strategic levels. Um, but when I, you know, when I'm speaking in layman terms and I, and I, you know, I've got a whiteboard or whatever, and I've got a, you know, class full of, you know, hard charging guys, um, you know, 50, 60, 70 guys, I'm talking about critical thinking. I'm like, all right, knuckle draggers, you know, this is, this is kind of what we're, this is kind of what, you know, we're wanting to achieve here in terms of critical thinking. I know there's a lot of information out there. You plug in critical thinking to the search bar and you're going to get an, a, an infinite number of, of media to navigate through. Um, but at its most basic level, right? Like, Critical thinking is exactly that, you know, drawing those connections, see where they intersect and see where they lead you. So when we're having a conversation, you dive down into stuff about business or I dive down into something about, you know, specific to my line of work. Conceptually, you can pull me out of that, drag, drag the conversation somewhere else and and foster that new line of, of thought. And we do that naturally, which is fucking rare, my friend. So. I just think I just had to bring that up, man. I thought it was interesting um, that I wrote those down. You followed up within two minutes and said it. And I'm like, okay, cool. Like you might talk about some stuff with the business. And I'm like, you know, I'd have to learn more about that. But again, broad, holistic uh, thought process. I get it. 
You're a good man, Dars. <laughs> and you, my friend. I miss the Twin Towers, my, my guy. I really do. Same. Same.